Hi there, everyone. I'm Andrew Fazekas, the Night Sky Guy, your host for the Night Sky this week for March 25th, 2024. Hope you had a great weekend. Did you guys get to do any stargazing? Let me know. Did you have some clear skies? Maybe you saw the moon. Absolutely gorgeous. Did you see it? It's a full moon right now. It's officially called the Worm Moon for March. Uh, March moons. Each month, uh, there's a full moon we have, and it gets a name. Um, it's kind of North American-centric, the naming that you might be hearing on the internet. The one that I used on my Facebook timeline, the Worm Moon, really reflects uh, basically the time period in the 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 year March when there's a lot of thawing going on, snow is melting, ice is going away, and the 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 uh, the soil, the ground is becoming unfrozen, and you get to see some of these earthworm little creatures coming out of the soil moving around again and so that's where that name comes the worm moon uh there are other names like sugar moon as well and other you can find a whole bunch of them it's just a fun way to name a full moon each month and of course there was a penumbral eclipse that's that went on a few hours ago I didn't talk really about it because honestly, you're not going to see anything. And a lot of people are actually quite disappointed with it because it wasn't very clearly visible. It's really, you have to be very familiar with the full moon and being able to see that very subtle shading as the moon goes through the outer penumbral shadow of the earth. Uh, it's really very subtle, the effect. And uh, if you didn't wake up at three o'clock in the morning to see it, I don't blame you. I didn't. I've, I've, I've seen it before, but there's not much to see. Uh, you really have to have a keen eye, very clear skies. And um, so you didn't miss much with that one. But there, of course, the big eclipse uh, that's happening on April 8th, that's coming up very soon. We are two weeks away as of today from the uh, the big total solar eclipse. Are you going to be seeing it? I'd love to hear if you are going to have an adventure, travel to see the eclipse. Where are you located? Maybe you're somewhere along the continent in North America. Everyone will see a partial solar eclipse, a big bite taken out of the sun's disk by the moon. Uh, but those lucky enough along this pathway that stretches from Texas uh, through into Canada, southern Ontario, Quebec, maritime provinces will get to see a totality, a few minutes of where uh, the environment gets dark, the skies darken as the entire disk of the sun is covered by the moon. Really cool stuff. This is happening on uh, Monday, April 8th. And of course, to see the partial eclipse, you need to have uh, safe viewing solar eclipse glasses uh, like these uh, that I have in my hands right now. Uh, they have a special mylar filter that really allows to most of the solar rays to be um, blocked. So it's a safe way to see it. Doesn't hurt your eye. Never look at the sun, even when we're not talking about the eclipse, just the normal everyday sun, it can damage your eyes, of course, your retina, uh, your vision can be temporarily or permanently blinded uh, by uh, looking at the sun that's so bright. And so uh, to do that uh, safely, you use one of these glasses, even your uh, smartphone uh uh, uh, sensors can be damaged by pointing it at the sun. And you can use these glasses to put it in front of the camera system of your smartphone and take pictures of the eclipse that way. So while there's the partial eclipse where you see a bit of the moon gobbling away the sun disk, this is what you need to see it. Now, uh, there's a lot of fake and counterfeit stuff out there. Just be careful where you buy it. Maybe perhaps you can pick one up for free at your local library or planetarium or maybe a school uh, or uh, an amateur astronomy group might be handing them out. Take a look, uh, look online, do your search, and uh, you might be able to pick one up for free. Uh, I am selling these. I bought them specifically from a one of the accredited manufacturers in the United States. There's only a handful that do manufacture them. This one's by Rainbow Symphony, and I purchased them personally um, for sale. I sell. I'm selling them in packs of five and twenty-five, and there's still time. I'm putting out. Uh, today, Monday, uh, March 25th, I am actually uh, 
posting them. So both for US and Canada sales, you can go onto my website, the night sky guy.com. I'll put a link uh, so you can uh, get that. Um, let me see if I can do that right now. These glasses are, you know, I would definitely recommend to make sure that you do have glasses like these that you are safe uh, to use. They have an ISO safety number. It should You should be able to see that on uh, the glasses. They're printed on there. Here's the link to my website where I'm selling them. You can. There's a guide, a viewing guide of what the clips will look like, how to watch it, all of the good stuff. Check it out. And then there's a little order form. Uh, and by purchasing these glasses, uh, you are supporting my live stream that I do every week for free. For everyone so i'd love to have your support and if you're interested i can i'm still sending them out um and uh check it out you might like that so hey what's the weather like hey look at this check this out isn't that cool look at that that is blue skies here in montreal canada where i am love it the sun is fantastic putting on quite a show and in fact there were a lot of solar activities on the weekend I don't know if you noticed. Let me see if I can bring in um, this, uh, my favorite um, Aurora solar prediction site called uh, spaceweather.com. Here it is. You can check that out. Spaceweather.com. Highly encourage you to look at it for Aurora predictions and things. And there is a very severe geomagnetic storm that happened, the strongest in years. This is a big belch of solar flare coming off of the sun, a coronal mass ejection that actually is a cloud of charged particles that was originating from the sun. You can see here where what we're talking about here is a, a, a current picture of the sun. And you can see right there that sunspot group is way bigger than even our entire planet would fit many times over uh, across this. It would gobble up our Earth. And this is what produced all this activity that is uh, making a lot of buzz. Unfortunately, for those of us in North America and Europe, it happened during the daytime yesterday, Sunday. And But those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, like in New Zealand, Australia, this is what you, uh, you would have been able to see in your skies. So really, really cool. This is a picture taken um, um, in New Zealand. And it was taken by Ian Griffin, a photographer there. And it's called Not Aurora Borealis, but Aurora Australis, because it's in the uh, southern hemisphere when you get these uh, beautiful sky light shows. So the timing uh, didn't favor those of us in North America and Europe, but hey, that sunspot is still there. You can still see it. This is what it looks like still pretty much. Uh, I'll post a picture of what I've taken through my telescope here um, in my backyard in Montreal uh, after the show, so you can check that out. Uh, but um, there is expectations that they could be more activity down the pipeline. So highly recommend uh, checking that out because you never know. There may be some really interesting light shows in, uh, in store and spaceweather.com is a really good place to check that out. But I'll be posting updates as well. So you, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, or Twitter, X, whatever, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe to my channel, do all that good stuff, thumbs up, share, um, hit that notification button and you won't miss out on perhaps some really cool stuff that's coming in the pipeline. So what else is there in the sky, guys? What else? Well, of course, we are dealing with that full moon, which blocks out a lot of stuff. So let me see if I can get my uh, planetarium program up and running. Of course, I use Sky Safari. My friends there at Simulation Curriculum create this amazing software that I love uh, to use to, to show what's in the sky. And here we are. This is sunset March 25th as I'm... Uh, talking right now, this is the sky that hits uh, around, well, you know, just after sunset, about a half hour, 45 minutes after your local sunset. It's set for 45 degrees latitude north of the equator. But ch check this out. You see uh, Jupiter. You see the planet Uranus right there above. Uranus is a green dot that will be very clearly visible in 
um, your binoculars. I would highly recommend using binoculars to find it. It's very difficult to spot with the naked eye, even though it's technically naked eye object. Any glow like this that you're seeing from the sunset will really block it out. But with binoculars, it's a fairly easy target. And of course, there's Mercury down here, visible as well. So these two objects uh, uh, um, are particularly good. If we move forward in time uh, to, let's say, um, uh, Friday, you can see that Jupiter and uh, Mercury are kind of closing in on each other. It's really good. This week is pretty good to see these two objects uh, close up together. Uh, Mercury is more of a challenge. Try using binoculars with it. And then, of course, I know what you guys are all looking at. It's this beautiful little guy here. This is the comet Pons Brooks. So you may have heard of it. I've talked about this comet before. It's making a lot of buzz for a number of reasons, but basically it's getting brighter and it's almost at naked eye visibility. If you live in a dark countryside, you might be able to glimpse this fuzzy little cotton ball after uh, sunset in during twilight. So about magical time period, around 45 minutes, an hour after uh, your local sunset in the west, low in the horizon. You want to get a, a viewing area, find a viewing spot that has that clear view, no trees or buildings in your way. And um, if you're in the countryside, you have a better chance of seeing it if you have no light pollution. So Pons Brooks comes around every seven decades or so, uh, and it is getting brighter. Like I said, it's uh, right now about a fifth magnitude object uh, visible in through binoculars, and it's close to Jupiter here. You can see it. Now, this is a, an artistic rendering. It doesn't really look like that to the naked eye. You don't see that tail. That tail really comes out only during... Um, astrophotography, long exposure astrophotographs. You could try using your smartphone to take it. And I've had friends that were able to uh, snap a shot of the comet and it looks like a green little fuzzy snowball kind of thing in photographs. But it's really cool to think it's this gigantic, big, a dirty snowball in space that's coming towards the sun from the outer reaches of the solar system. And it's just really a beautiful sight. Comets everyone loves. And it's predicted to get brighter, by the way. So over the course of the next few um, days, if we just move forward and see how the comet is moving, look by this. You see that it's approaching the star here? Check this out. So by Friday... Uh, and let me say Saturday, March 30th, let's go there. Look how close it is to that uh, star. That star is called Hamel, and it's the brightest star in the constellation, the zodiacal constellation, um, Aries, the ram, right? So that's a zodiacal constellation. Maybe perhaps that's your, your sign, uh, Aries. Um, and if I just get this a little bit darker for us, so like around 9 o'clock, uh, there. See how it's getting lower? It's setting. See that if you wait too long, you're not going to see that comet because it's just following the sun. But this is the view looking is that Jupiter is a great guidepost. Right there is Jupiter. There's Uranus. But Jupiter, that super bright, creamy colored star, really uh, dominating the low western horizon after sunset. That should be your guidepost in finding this comet, helping you to find it. And then the second guidepost, again, a great time is going to be this Saturday, March 30th. The comet Pons Brooks is going to be at making its closest approach to this bright star, Hamel. Hamel is this bright star that um, is going to be next to the comet. Look at that. Only a half a degree will separate these two objects. How much is half a degree? Well, half a degree is about equal to the, the diameter of the full moon in the sky. So when you look at the, the full moon, perhaps tonight on Monday night, still going to look very full to us as it rises in the east after sunset. Wait until it gets higher up in the sky, maybe around 11, 10, 11 mid o'clock, midnight, and look how wide that moon is. And make a mental note. That's about maybe you can cover it with your thumb at an arm's length, right? You can cover the entire disk of the moon. Well, that's the distance that'll separate Hamel and the bright comet Pons Brooks on Saturday, this Saturday, March 30th. So it's a great opportunity. If you haven't seen the comet, this is a time to, to check it out as it's flying by 
this naked eye bright comet. And Hamel, by the way, let's just check that out. Hamel is uh, at magnitude two plus two, which makes it a very easy bright star, even if you live in suburbs that have a lot of light pollution. This star, Hamel, is something um, that you can see with your uh, uh, eye. And by the way, Hamel is an Arabic word which means the lamb. Just a little side note there, um, where the, the name is, what it means. But Hamel is there for us right next to that beautiful comet, Pons Brooks, again, this Saturday, March 30th. So check that out. I think that's going to be a great opportunity. And, you know, there's a lot of talk, by the way, of Hamel, uh, not sorry, Hamel, but the comet, Pons Brooks, being uh, visible in the sky during totality. So if you're uh, on on April 1st, 3rd, April 8th, if you're on that path of totality during the total eclipse of the sun, some media are reporting that, hey, you know, the comet's going to be, Pons Brooks is going to be visible in the sky those precious few minutes of totality. Well, I'll tell you something, folks. Let me just fill you in a little bit on this, having had experience viewing eclipses and viewing comets and stuff like that. You don't want to miss watching the total eclipse of the sun. If you've never seen one, especially if you've never seen one, it's so special. And I don't want you to miss it. Yes, the comet may be visible. It probably won't be visible to the naked eye because the skies just won't get that dark during totality. You'll need binoculars and you're going to be looking for it. And guess what? The moments of totality, totality may last you only a minute where you are maybe upwards of three minutes if you're lucky. And those precious few minutes, you're going to spend looking for a comet that you probably won't see and it'll look like a faint fuzzy ball. It's a great challenge, yes. If you are up to it, you could try it, but I don't want you to miss the main show, which is the total eclipse of the sun. It is absolutely fantastic. And by the way, this idea of the challenge of viewing Pons Brooks is only for those that are in that path of totality of the sun, where the skies get darkened as the moon completely covers the sun. You can see Jupiter. Jupiter will be easy to see near uh, near the sun. So if I just move this, and I, you know what? Let me just show you on uh, the planetarium program what I'm talking about. You'll see uh, Jupiter there. And I've mentioned this in another show in the past, but let's just do this now so that get it out of the way so everybody kind of knows what I'm talking about. So we're going to hit this to... Uh, at the time of the eclipse of the sun. So I'm going to go to Monday the 8th of April, and I'm going to go during the timing of the eclipse. Here we go. You can see this is, there it is, okay? And during uh, totality, this is sort of when it is. So we're just going to move there and see how the skies are darkening right there. It'll be here like that. And this is what you will see on the 8th right there. See that? Okay, so it's a beautiful lineup, right? Isn't this great on the planetarium program we can do this? So you have Jupiter out here, right? You have Jupiter out here. You saw the comet just flashed off there, but the comet I wouldn't would be here. Don't bother with it. It's still going to be so faint that unless you can see it just by glancing over, I wouldn't spend time searching for it with binoculars. It'll take too long. You hear meteorologists and other folks on, on newscasts is talking about this and there's articles written about it. Yes, it's great, but you're going to waste your time and I don't want you to miss out that beautiful darkening of the sun. You'll also see Venus. So Jupiter will be the fainter uh, star-like object and the brighter one will be Venus near the eclipsed sun and then farther down near the horizon is Saturn and Mars. So Venus and Jupiter, those are the ones that I I think you're going to have a, a, an easy time to glance over during those moments of totality. See, look at the environment around you. But the comet Ponsbrook, it's going to be a challenge unless there's an outburst and it becomes super bright. I doubt that you're going to be able to see it. So I'm just keeping it real for you folks. I don't want you to waste your time uh, with that. So it'll be something very cool. I see folks chiming in. Um, uh, what is Ponsbrook's named for? It's named after the... Uh, astronomers that found it, discovered it. So that's where the names come from uh, when it comes to uh, asteroids and comets. They're named, named after their discoverers. So um, uh, Gina's hoping for a glimpse of Pons Brooks. I hope so. But I think you're better off 
now this week going outside and seeing what it looks like. But this is the sky that will appear again for those of us in sou southern Texas along this pathway that goes um, uh, right through into Canada through southern Ontario and Quebec. It's a hundred. It's about 180 miles wide the pathway. And uh, I just don't want you guys to miss out this beautiful view of the clip sum, but check out for Venus and Jupiter. Again, this is April 8th during the totality of the sun. There will be tens of millions of people who will be watching this, that's for sure. So that's that. And what else is there in the sky? Well, this week, also Tuesday, so tomorrow on March 26th, let me just set this uh, by one day. And then we're going to set this as the sun sets here. And we're going to look at where the moon is. And you can see that is where the moon will appear Tuesday night, March 26th. Check that out. Let me just go there. There you can see March. This is around 1030. It'll be rising late. It's a waning gibbous moon on Tuesday night, right? It's past the full moon. Guess what? This is the last full moon before the total eclipse of the sun, right? And uh, in two weeks, we're going to have a new moon. And that's when a solar eclipse happens, when it becomes the new phase where you can't see the moon uh, in the sky because it's close to the sun. And in this, in, in this instance, it's not just close. It's actually going to cover the sun, right, on April 8th. So it's really great because you see that timing, the celestial mechanics at play over the course of the next few weeks. And look at that. There's the waning gibbous moon. It's a near full moon, right? It's one day past the full moon phase. And uh, it's going to be near this brilliant blue uh, white star called Spica. It's the lead star in the constellation Virgo. And Virgo is a traditional springtime constellation. We just entered spring season, right, folks, just a few days ago? Well, this is the time to see uh, the springtime constellations coming into the evening sky. Virgo is one of them. Leo the lion up here, higher up in the, in the um, southeastern sky is right there. You can see it. And then beside, just beside Leo is Virgo the maiden. And what's really cool on Tuesday is that full moon is very close to it. Now, you may ask what is happening on um, tonight, on Monday. It'll be just above the, 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 the blue star spica, just on the other side. Do you see how the moon jumps from one day to the next? Look, moon is there, and then the moon jumps and will be even closer to spica on Tuesday. So you can go out tonight on Monday night and see it, but the moon will jump even closer to spica by tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, March 26. And then you can see by Wednesday, the moon is moving away. Let me put this a little bit later. It's heading into the constellation Libra. Let's go here. This is Friday night. Saturday night, the moon, again, you can see it's, uh, it's a smaller portion that's lit up of the disk of the moon. You can see that very clearly. And look where it is. It's heading into this, one of my favorite constellations, Scorpius another zodiacal constellation, and it's encountering the bright eye of the scorpion, the, which is marked by Antares. Antares is this red giant star. It's about 550 light years away. Just wrap your mind around that, folks. 550 light years away is Antares, and the moon will be joining it, creating this beautiful pairing. Again, this is going to be happening Late at night, I would say after midnight. So you got to be a, a, a late night owl to, owl to see this. However, if you're willing to get up early, this is what the view will be by uh, dawn. So by dawn, the, the, that will have moved, traveled across your skies through the southern skies. And it'll be pretty high up in the southern skies uh, by Saturday morning. So early Saturday morning, about an hour before Saturday, uh, before sunrise or a half hour, somewhere in that sweet spot in time, you'll be able to see Antares and the moon together hanging out in the southern sky. Just gorgeous. Amazing to think that the moon is, you know, only one, just over one light seconds away while Antares is more than 500 and takes 550 years for that light to reach your eye. Isn't that just incredible? And it's just a gorgeous pairing because of the, the silvery color of the moon. And then you've got this beautiful, bright orange jewel that Antares is. Again, this is Saturday morning, March 30th. Whew. 
That's a lot of stuff, guys. A lot of different cool things in the sky this week. Uh, thanks for joining me again. Uh, if you're interested in all kinds of things in the sky, I recommend my book, uh, Backyard Guide to the Night Sky by National Geographic. It's a great pocket guide. Uh, and I put all my tips and tricks on how to star hop and some of the amazing things that you can see in the sky. If you want something more beefy, more meaningful, a larger book, a table. This is a coffee tabletop type of book. It's not something you put in your back pocket. Six and a half pounds, large format atlas of all 88 constellations visible everywhere around the world, filled with deep sky tours that I've put in and a really interesting stories and information about the science of the deep sky objects and everything that we know about the universe is in this Stargazers Atlas. Highly recommend it. It's available wherever books are sold. I'm selling both of these books on my website. Sign dedicated copies, make great gifts, and it supports my live streams uh, like all these other things that I put out there um, regularly every week. Hey, guys, do all the good stuff. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. You don't want to miss out on any of this great stargazing information I have for you every week for free. I hope you stay safe and healthy uh, and uh, be kind this week uh, to everyone. And I will see you on the next video. Until then, I wish all of you clear skies. Bye-bye.